Hello and welcome to U.S. History 1 for Summer 2020. I am Mr. Kennedy and I just want to take a minute to introduce myself, give you a little bit of detail on what to expect for the semester and what we're going to be doing. Now you might see in the background that's my assistant, James Daniel. So if you hear any noise from him, um, he's just playing around. So hopefully he doesn't bother you too much. Okay, so this is what our Blackboard page looks like right here. And the very first thing I'm going to do is show you this Lessons tab. Yeah, I'm going to put it in student mode. Now you'll notice when I press Lessons, there's nothing there. It's because you have to do this course agreement form before you see any of the lessons. So what you'll need to do is click where it says Syllabus. And then the very first option says course agreement form. So let's do this real quick. Just going to do these questions, basically saying you agree to everything in the class, you've read the academic integrity policy, you understand academic misconduct, etc., etc. And it's that simple. Your course agreement form will be done that quickly. Next important thing you're going to see, History 2111 syllabus for the summer class. Let's take a look at what's in here. This tells you everything you need to know. Okay. First of all, there's my name, Jason Kennedy. My email address, jason.kennedy at westgatech.edu. Normally I would be at the Carrollton office, but because we don't know when we're going to be available for students. Uh, you're not going to find me there. So what I've done instead, I've set up a Discord server for us. Some of you may be familiar with Discord, some may not. But I'll show that to you. It's very easy to use. You can use it on your phone, your computer. And I'm going to be available on Discord Monday through Friday to help you 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, it is on my phone, so I can get instantaneous messages. You can also email me at the above address. Our textbook, I'm sure some of you are worried about that. For this class, it is free. It's called the American Yawk, and this is a link that will go to it. And the American Yawk is done by Stanford University Press. It's actually a fairly good book. And we're going to be in this volume one before 1877. Now you'll notice that each one of these links is a link to a chapter. So this is chapter six right here, and it looks just like a regular textbook. All right, so that is the American Yacht. This is a link to all the different policies that should be pretty much the same for each class, so I'm not really gonna go over those. What I do want you to pay attention to here is course attendance. Uh, course attendance is required, uh, but it's really, really easy. All you have to do is complete one online activity each class to be, or each week to be considered present. So that's at least one quiz. And also, students with perfect attendance, meaning you've done something every week for all eight weeks, you get extra credit for your participation grade. Now, something that's not quite as much fun as plagiarism, I'm going to read this one because it's important. Plagiarism is a serious offense. The penalty in this course for plagiarism or any other infraction of academic integrity will be a grade of zero on that assignment. Incidences of plagiarism will also be reported at the College for Disciplinary Action. Most students don't intend to plagiarize, but it is your responsibility to make sure that doesn't happen. All work for this course must be original to this course. Coursework for prior semesters or courses may not be used. To put this real simple, you're the one taking this class, you're the one doing the work. Your friend's not, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, uh, your neighbor, Google, whatever it might be, if they're not the ones taking the class, you are. No matter what you turn in, I guarantee your work is going to be better than something that you find on the internet or something you take from a friend. You may not think you're a very good writer, but I do reward those that do their own work. So please do your own work, please do not plagiarize. Uh, we have ways to find out. We know if somebody's plagiarizing. Please don't do it. Just do your own work. I promise you'll get credit for it. Speaking of work, here's the grading. Uh, here's how it all breaks down. There are two exams. There's a midterm exam. There's a final exam. Midterm exam, 
Final exam, 20%. Total, 40%. There are four reflection papers. These are opinion-based papers, so they're not like heavy-duty research or anything like that. Five times four, that's where I get the 20%. There's a museum review worth 10% of your grade, and you might say, wait a minute, are museums closed? Yes, they are. But there are online virtual museums and there are historical films you're going to get to do. 15% of the grade is activities, that's your quizzes, that's your discussion boards, things like that. There is a, a research paper that's 10% of your grade, but it's not going to be a difficult research paper. All I want you to do is find something in this class that interests you or that you want to know more about and research it. It's going to be a minimum five pages, but it shouldn't be that hard to do if you find something you're interested. Maybe you're interested in Frederick Douglass, the former slave? Write a paper on him. If you're interested in George Washington? Write a paper on him. If you're interested in Abraham Lincoln? Write a paper on him. If you're interested in the colonization of Virginia? write a paper on it. There is no set topic. I want you to find something that you are somewhat interested in. I want you to do some research and I want you to write five pages on that topic. And then last but not least, participation, 5%. That is your attendance. So make sure you do some work each week. Now for your exams, two exams, once again, they're not cumulative first half of the class is the first exam, second half of the class is the second exam. Each one counts for 20%. And I'll be honest with you, because this is a strange semester, online courses, multiple choice is what it's going to be. Maybe a short essay question, but nothing else. Reflection papers, there are four of them. And as I said a moment ago, these are opinion based. There are some readings in the lessons folder that you have to complete each week. And your reflection papers are going to be based on one of those readings through certain points of the semester. And the reflection papers, your first paragraph, just briefly tell me whichever of the readings you are reflecting on and the rest of it should be a total of about a page and a half to two pages long. How do you feel about it? I like it. I hate it. I believe in it. I disagree. I, I feel strongly. I don't feel strongly, whatever your thoughts, opinions, or ideas of your chosen article are, that's what you're going to write. Museum exhibit review, it's kind of like a reflection paper, but it's a little bit longer. It's about double the length. So instead of a page and a half, you should be looking at two and a half to three pages. And I have in here some questions you might want to think about when you're looking at your virtual museum. Do, do the virtual exhibits make sense? Does the layout of the website make sense? Is there something that the website does well, something they need to improve on? If you're doing a movie, think about those things, but add in, is the movie realistic? Is it factual? Does it follow the real events or is it just pure Hollywood? Activities, once again, it's your assigned quizzes, discussion boards, and any other work that I may assign. Research paper, five to seven pages on a topic of your choice. It's going to be in Chicago style. Some of you may know what that is, some may not. I'm going to go over that a little bit further into the class, so don't worry about it too much right now. But you've probably seen Chicago style writing before. That's when you have the little footnotes at the bottom of the page. Extra credit, you probably enjoy extra credit. I know I did when I was in school. It's real simple, just do a second museum review, watch a second movie, write a second paper on it. It's two points on your final grade. Can't do that. Then at the end is your course lesson plan. This is the work that we're going to be doing each week. All your work is due on Sunday night at midnight. So your first week, starting today, the 26th, you have until Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. to complete your first two discussions and your first two quizzes. You'll also see I have in there the due dates or reflection papers. Reflection paper one is due on the 7th of June. The reflection paper two is on the 21st of June. You see our midterm exam is the week of the 22nd. So on and so on. 
the research paper is going to be due on July 19th, and your museum review is going to be due on July 26th. So I have that laid out all at the end of the, of the syllabus. Here on the syllabus tab, you also see it says virtual office hours. If you click on that, it will open up Discord and it will take you to our course page. This is kind of like my lobby and then on the left hand side you can see the different classes. You're going to be this bottom one, History 2111, CRN 60479. So you can click on that and then you can talk and you can write whatever you might want to do. Now you can use Discord through the web browser like this or you can download the app or you can download the uh, program if you're going to use it on your computer. Either one is fine. But that is instantaneous conversation. It's real time and it's on my phone so as soon as you send a message I can see it and respond. This course lessons plan, that's the same thing that's at the end of the syllabus. So this is just a, another place you can find out what to do each week. So I have it on the course lesson plan, I have it on the syllabus, and I have it in the calendar too. All right, lessons. If you want to know more about Chicago Style, it's in this red link right here. Chicago Style Quick Guide, the Purdue OWL, that's the Purdue University Online Writing Lab that'll help you with writing on pretty much any style. And then how I'm grading your discussion boards. Um, the quickest and easiest thing to tell you about the discussion boards, don't be afraid to write more than one sentence. Some of the questions you're going to be asked do involve a paragraph of thought. Alright, moving on from there, the American Yacht. This is another link to the textbook. If I were to click here, it will bring you back to the textbook that you saw earlier. Reflection paper drop boxes. This has all of your reflection paper due dates. It also has a reminder of what the topic is or what the instructions are. And when you click on reflection paper, you'll see there's only one box open at a time. That's actually to help you and make sure that you don't accidentally submit your paper to the wrong drop box. So that's me trying to help you out. Museum Review Dropbox. Your museum review may be submitted at any time. So let's say you're bored sometime this week and you want to look at the website or you want to watch a movie because, hey, what else do we have to do right now? You could watch your movie, you could look at your website, and you could get this done first week and not have to worry about it. Now you see your Museum Review Dropbox is there at the top. Your list of virtual museums is here in the middle. You can use any of these museums to write your museum review on. Or if you're somebody who likes watching movies, I have some movies you can watch as well. One thing to know about these links, they go to the trailer, not the actual movie. So let's say you have no idea what All the President's Men is about. Maybe you've never heard of that movie. You can click that link, you can watch the trailer, and then you can decide, yes, I want to rent this, or no, let's find a different movie. Research paper Dropbox. This is where your research paper will be due. Uh, but if you notice, I don't have a Dropbox open yet. That's just because I don't want you to do it too soon. I want you to take time to research and write. Uh, we will go over that throughout the semester and we'll get you uh, working on that here shortly. Now each week, you'll have to do work out of these lesson folders. And because of the shortness of the semester, uh, lesson one and lesson two are going to be due at the same time, lesson three, lesson four, so on and so forth. Now each of these lessons is set up basically the same. You've got a chapter of the textbook that I have linked to. You've got some terms to know out of the textbook. Readings, this is where you get your information just to better your knowledge of the subject and it's where your discussion questions come from. Additionally, it's where you can get your reflection paper information from. So for example, let's say you read the Aztec account of the conquest of Mexico. That's a story of what happens when Hernan Cortez meets Montezuma. Let's say you're like shocked by that story and you can't believe it. You could write your, your reflection paper on that and move on from there. 
Or let's say that you go to a different reading. I'll go to lesson two here real quick. Let's say you read the laws of Virginia. There's a lot of death and destruction in there, a lot of reasons to be killed. Maybe you're shocked and appalled by that. You could do your reflection paper on that reading. So that's kind of how those work. There are videos in each lecture, or in each lesson, I should say, that kind of give you a little more background. If you've ever seen these crash course videos, uh, you know what they're all about. If you haven't, they're actually good for historical films and videos. You have a discussion question to do. You have a, ch a quiz to do. The quiz is based on the textbook. The discussions are based on the readings. And each class is going to be set up that exact same way. All right, so just another reminder, all work is due Sunday nights at midnight. I'm also going to make PowerPoints and put them up there since I can't lecture you in person and um, you can't take notes in person. I'm going to make PowerPoints, put PowerPoints up, and I'm going to record a video like this and put it up as well. I'm going to do a PowerPoint and lecture every Monday and every Wednesday. So I'm going to try to break it up a little bit so you don't have to sit through like an hour long video because really who wants to do that? So you're going to find a video on Monday, you're going to find a video on Wednesday. Each video is going to have an accompanying PowerPoint. Uh, the only exception is going to be this first week since we start on a Tuesday. I'm going to do only Wednesday because I can't go back in time. Uh, the last word for you. Um, if you're not familiar with online courses, uh, the best advice I can give you from having taught these a few times and from taking them myself when I was a college student, set a time to do your work each week. So if you're taking my class and a speech class, do the speech class at the same time each week, do the history class at the same time each week. Doesn't mean you have to sit down and do it all at once. But maybe Monday and Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. you do history and Tuesday, Thursday at 10 p.m. you do speech. Whatever it is, be consistent. That's the best thing and easiest thing to do with an online class. All right, so this is long enough. If you could do me one last favor, and this will be for um, an easy 100, email me when you watch this video. That way I know you have seen it. You have seen the, the introduction. You know what's going on. When I get an email from you, I will put a 100 in for a quiz. So that's an easy way to start the class with an A. All right, until next time, uh, good to meet you. Good to see you. I hope to hear from you. And uh, let's make this a good semester. We'll talk to you soon.